Hey, hey, we're back with the Bionicle Inspiration series, and you guys asked for this, so here you go. We're focusing on Hero Factory today, specifically Invasion from Below themed mocks. Now, I'm going to be talking mainly about the Titans of this wave. I know where there were also the monsters as well, uh, but all I could find were the, the mechs, so maybe we can do a kaiju-focused episode a little later. Uh, so if you're a little unfamiliar with Invasion from Below as a wave of Hero Factory, basically it was the final wave of Hero Factory sets, and they were different because you got little tiny minifigures that fit inside mech suits uh, so they weren't your typical you know brick built construction figure they were still construction figures of course but they were you know piloted mechs instead of actual robotic people uh, so that was a, a really unique take and I remember really enjoying it thinking it was super different and fun uh, so there's no reason we can't continue to uh, have fun with that uh, style of Hero Factory mocks so let's start off now and take a look at a few ways that we could approach building just like that. Mr. Boltron has built this mock, and this is Bulk Drill Machine Revamp, uh, and he's also called it Golem, but with you know, numbers and letters and things like that, uh, so that it sounds cooler. But I like this. One of the first things that immediately grabbed me about this was the spam of guns all throughout the torso here, uh, just you know, next to the cockpit. I love that, you know, if, if you're going after all these monsters deep underground that you know nothing about, it kind of makes sense you'd want to have a lot of firepower in the hopes that it can actually, you know, deal some damage. Uh, so it seems fitting within the story, so some nice justification for that choice, but uh, I don't know, I always, I always thought Bulk was a bit more of a kind of weapons master who would uh, definitely pack a, a good punch, you know, especially because he had that variant of the set where he had two gun arms there, so uh, it also seems fitting for the character. But I also like the fact that if he wanted to look left and right, he really can't because there's guns in the way. Uh, but I think that's also interesting. I, I like the idea of, of building characters or vehicles or things like that that have you know pros and cons. It's like, yeah, this mech has a bunch of firepower and it's going to hit hard. It's a, just it's basically a tank, you know, but you can't really see out of it that well. And maybe those guns are super heavy, so the machine can't walk that well. But maybe you've got another mech, maybe like Surge's mech is super fast and super quick, but doesn't have a lot of firepower. So maybe he needs to scout ahead and then run off. But if he gets caught in a fight, you're going to have some trouble. Uh, so that could be interesting if you want to build like a series of mocks. Have a think about the pros and cons of using those those mechs, or even if you're not building mechs, you're just building normal characters, you know, the pros and cons of their armor or their weapons, that sort of thing, uh, and, and see if that can kind of inform how you build. Uh, and if you are, you know, someone who actually plays with your uh, mocks, awesome if you do, uh, that could be a really fun way of playing too, knowing the pros and cons. So uh, I don't know how intentional that was when he was building this, but uh, I think it's still a really cool idea. These weapons are also really interesting. I love his big old hammer and the fact that in some of these photos here, it's got some flames coming out of it. So it's like a rocket propelled hammer that, uh, you know, you can really force it down on someone and really crush them. Uh, it's a clever idea. And also this spiky shield is cool. The idea that you could punch someone with the spiky bits and block it as well. So it's both an offensive and defensive weapon. That's pretty cool. I like that. The drill is also really well done. The fact that there's a lot of detail on it. You know, it's not just a drill kind of slapped onto the arm. There's pipes. There's what appears to be a little like kind of flashlight on the end there. Uh, it just seems really integrated into the armor. And I think it's a pretty easy trap to fall into when uh, adding weapons onto a mech or any kind of creature to just kind of put it on as an afterthought. But if you really integrate it into the suit and uh, pay attention to little tiny details, uh, it can uh, just make it feel a lot more integrated and a part of the overall design. So I like how that's been done here and the specific attention that's been uh, you know focused on there. One other thing I enjoy is this shoulder-mounted uh, little red blaster thing at the top there. Uh, obviously using those red uh, Mari you know, ammo pieces that came on the Toa Mari, uh, but instead of inserting them into the you know existing Mari blasters, putting them in just your, your typical normal pieces, because for the most part they should be able to fit, uh, and it makes for still a very nice shoulder-mounted gun there. So a very simplistic design, but one that works really well. So a lovely little mech here that's just loaded with all sorts of weapons. Really, really cool to see. Let's move over to a mock by my old pal Phosphorus, and this is called Project Galaxy. So there is a bit of a bio on this on Flickr. You can read it yourself. There's links in the description if you want. Uh, but it actually has nothing to do with space, which I was like, ah... Oh, I really liked the idea of heroes in space and them wearing like big space suits instead of uh, you know mech suits that they use to, to travel underground and mine and fight these beasts. You know that could be a really cool subgenre of Hero Factory you could make up yourself and play around with of heroes in space. You know them fighting aliens and you know do they have mech suits? What do they look like? You know do they have like rockets and interesting things like that? It was a cool idea. 
but actually nothing to do with this mock specifically, but that's okay. Something that is good about this mock is, you know, when we were looking at the, the last bulky bulk mock, uh, it had a lot of kind of prefab pieces, you know, it specifically used the cockpit pieces that you would get with your Invasion from below sets. And I love that, I think that's great, but it's nice to see a version of a mech suit Hero Factory inspired uh, mock that branches out and uses more modern pieces or even older pieces, or is even built in more of a modern building style with very, you know, clean, angles, very smooth textures, and barely any gaps to be seen. Uh, so I like the fact that a bunch of tires have been used here. I think the integration of one of these old hockey torso pieces in red. Uh, one, it's really nice how the natural curves around the neck of that hockey torso piece uh, perfectly just sort of match up with the um, sort of trans black cockpit piece here uh, that Evo is resting inside of. Uh, so it's some, some really nice sort of partnering of pieces to create some very nice shaping. Uh, but seeing that hockey piece, just the way it ends at the very back there, how it then transitions into those two red Hero Factory armor pieces there, that's really nice. Uh, so again, some lovely shaping going on. And I think that's one of the, the, the better things about this entire mock is there's some brilliant shaping. Uh, and, you know, like I said, tires covering up all of those gaps there. Uh, it's a very modern take on uh, Invasion from Below. Uh, but I think, in general, that's just a, a clever way of approaching any mock. You can get away with it with most things, you know. What if you build some of the really early Hero Factory or Bionicle sets with more modern pieces? Or what if you build a very late wave of Hero Factory or Bionicle, but you use some older pieces instead, or older building techniques? Uh, it could just be a nice way of reimagining something and giving it a bit of extra oomph or a bit of extra life. And I think this is a really nice example of that. It's also got a very unique shape to it as well, just the way it's hunched over and these big kind of jet engine spike kind of wing things poking out of the back there. It's, it's really, really cool. So really like this. Well done, my good sir. Let's go now to a mock by EXX Trooper, and this is Breeze XL Machine. So something that immediately grabbed me about this is how much it is similar to the old Evo Titan mech. Uh, that was one of the largest sets of the Invasion from Below Wave. You know, specifically the fact that he has some interesting like gear functions on the torso there, so he's got some nice you know, torso articulation. That's lovely to see. And in, on, in all honesty, when I bought the um, Evo Titan mech uh, that uh, you know, came out in that Wave of Invasion from Below, I remember loving it. I thought it was one of the best Hero Factory sets we ever got. I thought it was brilliant. And I thought some of the interesting gear functions were revolutionary, and I thought, ah, oh, when we continue on with more Hero Factory, I think this is going to be the way that they'll approach stuff is building more in this style with this you know these new gear pieces and sort of torso articulation and I think this is just a it's nice to see how Hero Factory's evolved and it's become this and where's it going to go next and then it died and never returned but that's okay you know I'm over it now but I remember at the time being really excited by that so it's nice to see a mock that's sort of continuing that legacy and advancing it but still feels very much in the vein of a set, but in, like the vein of a really good set, you know? This is still not too sort of gappy, but there's still a lot of areas where you can see articulation would work. And, you know, honestly, this could probably work as a set, you know? There's, there's oftentimes there's distinctions between mocks and sets because one needs to be played with, the other one can just sit on your shelf as a display piece. And there's various other factors that LEGO puts into when, uh, you know, designing a set that wouldn't fly, uh, that would fly on a mock, but wouldn't fly on a set. Uh, but uh, this one is a nice middle ground between the two. Complex, but still looks playable, you know? So yeah, lovely to see uh, almost an homage to Evo's Titan Mech, which honestly was such a good set. Another thing on this mock that really grabbed me was the inclusion of a lot of lights in Trans Red. Minor details like that are always just the, the perfect little finishing touch. You know, they're added on the torso, they're on the shoulders as well, and they're also on the gun there. And it just makes sense, you know, they're underground, they'll need lights to see the way forward, so put them on the mock, right? Uh, I think it's just a good lesson of really thinking about the setting that your mock would be living in or inhabiting or exploring and just thinking, you know, what kind of little details could I add onto their armor or other parts of the body or maybe have as sort of separate accessories that they uh, would definitely be using if they're actually engaging in their sort of given circumstances there, you know, who, what, when, where, why, why they're there, what they're doing there, who are they, you know, are they a high-ranking leader? Would they have like a badge or, you know, specialized gear, you know, have they undergone specific training or what kind of weapons would they have because of that? Having a think about all those sort of circumstances can really just... Um, uh, bring out some of the finer details and finer qualities of a mock as well. So, I don't know, I get the sense EXX Trooper really did think about that sort of stuff and then integrated those tiny little lights on there to bring this mock to life and make it feel all that more real. It's also a really great part use to see those uh, 
typical Hero Factory feet pieces used up there on the shoulders. They form a nice sort of roof to the top of this mech, but also kind of branch out in all the right ways so that it looks like this shoulder pads of sorts. But I also like the fact that the actual socket that's sticking out that isn't just a sort of unsightly socket that just looks weird. They've built around that and added, you know, lights or some sort of little, I don't know, turret or scanning device or some sort of something there so that that space is occupied and doesn't look weird. But I also like the idea too that maybe those could be swapped out and you could put like a turret on top or larger guns or some other kind of attachment that, uh, you know, maybe there's a mech that carries around those attachments and they, they sort of stop, they, they fit them on uh, and suddenly now they can like drill into the walls or explore underwater or do whatever. Uh, so I like the idea of like uh, areas on a mock that could uh, have room for further expansion or additional attachments. I don't think that's the specific intention there, but uh, just sort of examining that further, I was like, hey, maybe you could do that. So something to consider if you're planning on building a mech uh, inspired by Invasion from Below. So a brilliant mock by EXX Trooper. Really do like this one. Lovely to see. On to the last one. This is by Blackly Cat, and this didn't have a name, so I'm just calling it Evo Mech. Now, what's cool about this is it's just like a typical dude. You know, he's got a head, he's got the body, the legs, the arms, everything. Uh, whereas the ones we've been seeing before have had the more sort of noticeable cockpit that's sort of embedded, embedded, excuse me, embedded into the torso. But if we look at this picture here, we can see that there is indeed an Evo figure underneath. So I like that idea. There's a very specific style to Invasion from Below mechs. Who says you need to follow it whatsoever? Why not just build a typical, normal Bionicle character, hollow out the torso a little bit, have the head be able to flip up, and suddenly now it's a mech-controlled vehicle. And then maybe you don't have any of those uh, Invasion from Below Hero Factory figures. I don't think they're super expensive. I honestly don't know. I haven't looked it up. But you could easily just use any ordinary minifigure. They're pretty easy to get some these days for relatively cheap. Uh, but I'm sure you've got some lying around in your collection anyway. But I think that's a really cool idea. And a very different way of approaching a mech for Invasion from Below. Or Hero Factory in general. This may not be specifically for Invasion from Below. But it works. Some other nice stuff with this mock. I love the way that the lower legs have been designed here. They're using some of these yellow Technic panel pieces. They're also being used on the shoulders as well. Uh, it's a very smooth, sweet looking design. Uh, and it's a nice reminder too to pay attention to your Technic Lego sets that still come out today because that's about the closest thing you can get to more construction focused pieces. And sure, you can use your system pieces. They'll be great too. But uh, so many Bionicle Hero Factory construction focused pieces very easily integrate with Technic pieces. So pay attention to some of those parts buy one of those sets maybe, or even just invest in one or two pieces on Bricklink or something and see if you can work them into your Bionicle or Hero Factory mocks because seeing those Technic pieces here, they work flawlessly. But yeah, I think this is a very different take on a mech for Hero Factory and certainly one you might be able to consider if you're planning to build some. So hopefully that helped and gave you a little bit of inspiration for any future mech style builds or Hero Factory inspired builds. Thank you very much for watching. And, you know, I mentioned that Kaiju episode before. I have no plans to do that currently, but if there's interest, I'll happily do it. The only reason I'm doing this is because there was interest. So voice your opinions. If you've got other themes that you would like to see, leave them in the comments below and I'll see if I can do a Bionicle Inspiration Series episode all about it. Uh, also in the description below are links to my social media. So if you want to see some of the stuff that I've got going on, that's the perfect place to check it out. I'm Ben Cossey on all forms of social media uh, and I'll definitely have some more stuff coming soon I've got some photos saved on my phone that I'll be uploading very very soon uh, additionally there is my patreon so if you'd like some bonus content be sure to subscribe to my patreon where you can find a bunch of cool bonus content over there uh, additionally there is the submission email which is on your screen right now but also in the description below if you want to copy and paste it and send me an email uh, that is the perfect way to do so and you can send whatever you think is necessary to that email and I'll see if I can fit it into an episode of the show uh, otherwise, I think that's everything. I'm probably forgetting something, but hey, that's okay. Happy building, and bye for now, guys.